All right, raise your hand if you already do live streaming. Of any kind. Anybody Periscope in here, Meerkat? That's live streaming. Anybody Blab? Have you heard of Blab? Raise your hand if you've heard of Blab. I saw a few people. It's my new favorite site, so I'll, I'll run down those. So live streaming, there's all different forms. Um, so I'm probably better known here in Orlando. I'll try and stay all that and let you do it from this point on. Um, for the Florida Blogger and Social Media Conference and Gotta Get Blogging, I was in the Starter Studio, which was a tech accelerator here. Uh, all for blogging, but really my, my real life, my, my main job is with Florida Swim Network. And this was a blog that I started. My husband's a swim coach. My son was a swimmer. Anybody ever been to a swim meet in here? Anybody ever enjoyed that swim meet that they went to? Swimming is the most boring sport in the world. And I say that, and it's my business. It is incredibly boring. You hear the whistle blow, they swim down and back. And then you wait three hours for your kid to swim again, down and back. It's tedious, absolutely tedious. So I hated going to these things. I hated going to swim meets. I felt awful. It was like the worst mom in the world. We did the two parent, well, we did one parent rule. I figured as long as my son had at least one parent present, we were good. Like I didn't also have to go to the swim meet. Dad was there because he was coaching. So I figured I was covered, but I actually was. I had to go too. So um, I started blogging about as a swim mom, and that kind of turned into a little bit bigger. And then one day I said, why don't I try live streaming? Why don't I try live streaming a swim meet? Ryan Lochte, who's an Olympian, you might know him from uh, the Ryan Lo that reality show that was so bad. He was swimming in it. It was bad. It was bad. Um, and so I said, it'd be kind of fun to live stream it. And this was back in 20, either 10 or 2011. And so uh, he said, yeah, that'd be cool. Well, we knew nothing about live streaming. So we went to Best Buy. You remember the little eyeball cameras, the little webcams that were up like that? They're not made for sports or for any type of movement at all. We used it. We bought it for like 50 bucks. I got my webcam. I went down there. We said it. I'll have a picture later on of the first webcast we did. Uh, I think I signed up for Ustream. At Livestream may or may not have been a thing back then. And so I signed up. Then we went live. The eyeball was sitting on the speaker of the announcer. And so anytime he spoke, it would shake. And so it was really bad. And I'd be turning it like that. It was the worst thing you've ever seen. Horrible. I mean, you can't even tell there were people in the water, much less what they were doing, because the clarity was so, so bad. So Bitmap was awful. But on deck, people are like, hey, Joe, what's your wife doing? It's like, oh, she's, she's, she's live streaming. You can watch it on the computer. They started texting their mom and dad. They started texting their brother. They started texting their friends. We had over 300 people tune in to this really crappy web stream. Now, it was awful. But guess what? I went, oh we might have something here. So we have grown from that to being able to stream well enough now. We know a little bit more about it on uh, ESPN. We stream all the University of Florida swim meets for the SEC Network, also for ESPN. Uh, we stream weekly shows. We have a weekly television show on Bright House called On Deck with Florida Swim Network. So we've been able to make a go of it. So uh, I want to share with you guys some of the best practices because we do it all on a WordPress site. We're actually a multi-site, which I'm kind of bummed because the session I want to be in is going on right now. But I hear they're having a panel on it. So. All right, so um, why should you live stream? There's some pretty obvious answers. It's interactive. It gets a lot of interest. It's pretty easy to do now. And I always say live streaming is one of the easiest things to do, but it's also one of the hardest things to do. And there's a couple of reasons why that I'll go over. Um, really, all you need now is your uh, phone. You can live stream. In fact, I'm surprised we don't have some of my first cooking this right now. Um, Meerkat. I mean, they're all pretty easy to use now. Ustream, live stream. They all offer some pretty cool tools. Not hard to do. We live stream with some really big, big cameras, but then we also live stream using a 50 buck camcorder. If you can find one on sale at Best Buy because it's been brought back in an open box. Go ahead. 
So these are the analytics from our live stream. Our preferred live streaming when we are live streaming an actual swim meet is livestream.com. I've tried just about all of them. We tried Ustream. We tried a bunch of different ones. For our needs, live streams fit very, very well. I can tell you it's the best out there, but it does fit our needs well. It's affordable for 50 bucks a month. Yes, that sounds like a lot if you're a blogger, but compared to what you can be charged for live streaming, you make it very affordable for your What I like about it is the interface of how it looks on our WordPress site. So our WordPress site, we had to make it uh, easy for our viewers to watch. And if you're watching sports, they like to be able to rewind and watch stuff. So live stream actually has a DVR function, just like on your TV. You can rewind, watch something, and then you push the live button and it catches you back up so you're live again. The other thing we like about live stream is that it also allows you to create highlights while it's going. So I had the swim meet going and they finish up the backstroke event. So while the live stream is still going, I can go in and create a little clip of just the backstroke. And then it appears. So it's kind of like a broadcast wall, kind of like Facebook. Our live stream's up here and then all the events come down underneath. They can then share that out to Facebook. They can tweet it. They can email the link to grandma or grandpa. So it works very well for our needs. I also like their analytics. So this was for the past month, um, our analytics. And you can see we obviously didn't broadcast anything on November 9th. But live stream is a little bit different because the amount of replays. Most of our views don't come from the actual live stream itself. It comes from the replays. They go back and they watch it afterwards. They share it out and grandma posts it to Facebook because she's figured out how to do that true. We have a lot of grandparents on Facebook who are our Facebook fans. And so then that gets shared out. So the shareability of people like that whole live stream, they're much more likely to share a video of a grandkid than maybe a blog post about something the grandkid's doing. So it's, it's a little different. I'm gonna go ahead. So I'm comparing this to our WordPress. So this is our Google Analytics from our WordPress site for the exact same time period. And so if we go ahead and go one more for me, Nancy. Here they are side by side. And you can see our unique viewers a lot more on live stream. Now you're saying, okay, if you've embedded it on live on your WordPress site, why is there the difference? Well, because when they share out from that word from that live stream wall, the reshare will take them to the work to the live stream site to watch the replay versus our site. So but uh, that's a lot of unique viewers that actually that content outdoes our blog posts, our interviews that we do. So live streaming can add some really valuable content that people want to see. Go ahead. And particularly, not only the unique viewers, but check out the average time on that content. They are sticking around and watching. That is the average time spent on that site. Eight minutes. It's a lot. It is a lot versus the two and a half minutes that I get on my WordPress. Yeah. Well, I think it depends. So, video itself is engaging. So, that, that was a great question. How, you know, how much is it because they're watching their grandkids swim versus a business presentation? Well, one thing about video, and this is something I have a love-hate relationship with video, I actually don't enjoy YouTube that much, simply because I'd much rather read an article, because I can skip down and see what I want to see. I'll read the headlines, and then I'm done. Video, you have to sit and you have to wait through. So I think by nature, video keeps somebody there longer, simply because they are having to move at the speed of the presentation. Kind of like I could give you guys the clip, clip notes and y'all could be out of here. But right now you're having to sit here and watch me present. So I think it's somewhat the nature of the content. But again, just like a blog post, you have to know what your readers want to know. So you have to be able to present them something that's interesting anyway. Yep. Um, that's how long, the average duration is how long somebody is spending on my site before they click away. Yeah, 
our videos are actually about four hours long because we're streaming an entire session of a swim meet. We'll start at, you know, uh, eight in the morning and then go to noon and then we'll go again. That's the prelims. Then we'll go again in the afternoon for it. So, um, but we'll talk a little bit about um, what some of the things we do to keep watchers engaged. Um, so devices, and this was interesting that uh, everything's going to mobile, as we know. But for video, at least for our audience, they still prefer to watch on desktop. We still have more than half watching our content on desktop. So that means your user interface that you have is going to be very important what you, how you set up your WordPress site and how they find it and how they look at it because they are looking on desktop versus the phone. Yeah, I was just calling attention to that. All right, so you buy, make it grandma proof. So live streaming itself is a scary word for most of the population. Watching something is not, viewing something is not, a broadcast is not, but as soon as you say live stream, it sounds all of a sudden techie. And they're not really sure what you mean. We all know what I mean. But for most of the population, they don't quite get it. They're not exactly sure what you mean. So we tend to avoid words like that when we're talking to our audience. We're going to broadcast this swim meet. You can watch the broadcast. So we used to terms like that. Um, that was something we discovered when we'd say, hey, you know, we're going to be live streaming it. And the swim coaches would be like, you're what? Swim coaches are notoriously non-techie. So we have had a huge learning curve with educating our audience with what we do. And really, it turned out to be us changing what we said and how we said it in order to communicate to them what we were doing. Go ahead. So on live stream, and really any of any format that you live stream through, whether it's Periscope, whether it is Blab, whether it is live stream, you stream, the idea is you want them coming to your WordPress site. So you want to be able to embed that live stream on your site. So live stream actually gives a couple of different options. You can do um, just the single viewer here, which we found works for grandmas in the lower tech end of our audience. Go ahead. So what we will do, normally if we have, this is our front page, that's our normal front page of our main site. Well, if we had to expect them to, grandma, to click on the blog post, first read which one it was, and then click through, that's too much. So we immediately did not do that. Go ahead. So whenever we are broadcasting live, this is now our front page. So we change WordPress completely. We change the settings on what our front page is. They, all they have to do is go to floridaswimnetwork.com. Nope, not yet. And leave it. They don't even have to push play on it. They just sit there because we have it set to play automatically in the embed code. And that works for us. They get it. That is called grandma proof. You still have, go ahead and hit the little click here to go through to our main site, which then would take them to the regular home page. But for whatever day we're broadcasting, this is our front page, grandma proof. Now, for our more text, oh, and that's how you do it if you're not sure, you go into settings, one reading, and then you choose that page. So you have to have it set up as a page, not a post. Everybody with me on that one? And then after we finish the broadcast, I'll go back and set it back to our regular home page. Okay. So for our higher tech, so for all our swimmers, for all our competitors, for our parents that are tuned in and a little more techy, we actually do set up a regular site as well. And for that, they allow you to embed the entire, the entire actual broadcast wall from live stream. And so we actually do have a single post where we have the exact same content, the exact same stream, but they're going to see the whole broadcast wall. And the important part of that is because it has a chat room. So part of what we do with our live stream is, even though we have commentators there, we usually have two commentators per meet doing the play-by-play. -play. 
They are actually, though, engaging in the chat room. We never broadcast without that chat room. We don't do it on the grandma page because that's a little intimidating. They're not really sure what it is. They're not sure how you get on there. So we don't confuse them with that. But generally, when we tweet out, hey, we're live streaming, we'll tweet out this one. So after we get the pages set up, then our front page is the embed, the grandma proof one. We also have the post page, that's the fully immersive one where they can chat. Well, after we have that set up and we go live, well, not quite yet. We still got to promote it a lot. So this is just common sense promotion with how you promote anything else. That's good. So, yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's good. So we promote it across all our channels. So, of course, we'll do Instagram. We'll do Twitter. That's all right. Yeah, it, it had an automatic transition on it. So we just leave it. Um, so um, we had... So Facebook, Instagram, all those different places. So these would be leading us directly to the actual post page because these are our savvier people that we know will engage in the chat. We also, of course, do the email, MailChimp, my personal favorite. Um, the guy who presented first in here this morning, he was good. He mentioned a couple different, different ones. So um, MailChimp, though, is my favorite. We always uh, send the email out day before they go live, and that way they can go right to it. So if they click this, it does take them to the post page where they know they can chat. All right, so the user engagement, so that experience that our viewers have while they're watching. And this is part of what we really think is important to keep those viewers there while you're live streaming. It's not television. Too many times, we see live streams and they're treated like television. It's not television. Why would you take away that great interaction that your viewer can do? Why would you take away their voice and their engagement? Raise your hand if you've heard of Twitch TV. Okay. What did Twitch just sell for? Almost a billion dollars? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Twitch TV, okay, I'm of that age group. I totally don't get it. My son totally gets it, I don't get it. So you're watching people play video games. Am I right? For the most part, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but get this. They have, at their peak hours, more act, what I read, more active users on the site than Facebook does on their site at peak hours. That's crazy. And so I was reading this article, I was like fascinated. I'm like, oh my gosh, what are they doing? And what they attribute their success to is the engagement that the people watching can engage with the player, they can chat. They can engage with that player. The guy gaming talks back to the people chatting to him. And so it's this formula that you can recreate with your live stream. So my best advice to you is have that chat because they not only can ask questions, for our case, they give shout outs to their favorite swim team, their favorite swimmer. Our commentators remind them, hey, when your swimmer gets home tonight, they're gonna to be watching this replay. Let them know you're watching. And so they get on there and say, hey, can you give John and Lane Seven a shout out from grandma and things like that. And yes, we do have grandparents that do figure it out and do eventually chat because they hear us saying, if you wanna give a shout out and what grandmother doesn't wanna give a shout out to little Johnny in the pool. We usually do not have problem with any spammers. I think there's only been one time ever that we've had to uh, ban somebody for inappropriate language. They were, we, we value sportsmanship. We'll say that, you know, hey guys, we value sportsmanship. We don't badmouth any other teams. So we kind of lay some ground rules. But we actually have engagement with people that I've gotten to know very, very well because they chat all the time. They tune in to watch their kids swim. When we broadcast for, so University of Florida is funny. They, they love when we broadcast, and they liked it when we broadcast on Florida Swim Network best because we could have the chat room. And so the coaches would be coming up and be like, who do you have in the chat room? They're hoping it's some recruits. So they loved that. 
And now that uh, the SEC network, they signed a deal to where we have to, we can no longer broadcast on our platform anymore. We have to broadcast on the SEC network and sometimes on ESPN. I know it sounds great, but I'm like, I don't get the views, so it doesn't help me at all. Um, and they don't have a chat room. They treat it like TV. So I'm like, it's not TV. Why wouldn't you have that great chat room? So anyway, the, the, the coaches at the University of Florida were a little, little sad when they lost this great tool because when we were broadcasting for the SEC Network, we broadcast right on our platform, and they've got several international swimmers. So they have uh, Sebastian Rousseau, Olympic swimmer from South Africa, swims there. His mother, Vanessa, every single swim meet would tune in, and she'd chat. She'd say, can you get a close-up of my son? I haven't seen him in six months. So we'd zoom in for her. Those types of things. I mean, that is what live streaming should do. It makes the world a really, really small place. We could have Francesca or Francesco. I don't know if it's his mom or his dad. It's either a cut or a co. But in Italy, that would tune in to watch his son Mitch swim. And so we'd have these same people. Middle of the night, he's tuning in to watch his son swim. Well, it's Italy. So it makes the world a really small place. And so what it can do is connect you with your readers or your website visitors in such a personal way. So if you have the chat room, interact with the chat room, just like any other form of social media have it on there. So um, the way high school works, right now we're at high school season. My husband actually is in Stewart this morning. He'll be back tonight uh, covering a high school state swim meet. And so they make it from districts to regionals, and then only a few of them will qualify for the actual state meet. And so we broadcast a state selection show. We actually go in the studio and we announce the names. We treat it like ESPN, like these are the swimmers that made it to the state meet. And all the swimmers from all over the state are tuning in because they're excited to find out if they have made it to the state meet or not. And so we'll have a real active chat room. So while they're broadcasting, I'm actually managing the chat room and people are saying things and I'll have to rhyme down on the on a little post-it note, and then I run in on a break and give them the notes, and I go back out because they don't have access to the, the chat room while they're doing it. And so uh, this is one of the ones they were talking about. Gainesville High School, they're trying to uh, break a national record. They already set the state record, and Katie Cronin's one of the swimmers, and so she's at, on the chat room saying, challenge accepted. So I run there in that, and so we later posted an Instagram of it to show that we are actually engaging with the chat room. All right, so. One more time, and this is a video to show you in action. So this is that same state show. And so our main page is set to the grandma proof. But again, you can click to go through. So no chat room on the front because that is the grandma proof one. We don't want to confuse anybody. But we do have the post as well. And so those who are savvy enough will be on that and they do, they are chatting. So there you go. So this is what I'm doing during a broadcast. All of these windows I'll have open. On live stream itself is where I can actually ban anybody if I need to, so I have to have live stream up. I'll also be actively tweeting because we have people that are commenting via Twitter while they're watching, and so we'll be manning Twitter. And then we're constantly tweeting out, reminding people, hey, we're live here, and we'll be tweeting that post link out. And then we'll also have it going on Facebook as well. So they can watch on Facebook, or they can click through to, again, go back to the WordPress site. So all of these windows I'll have open, and we'll be constantly going back and forth between all of them throughout the broadcast. And that's how you keep your readers and your watchers engaged. Because they're not just single tasking on you. They also have Twitter open. They also have their phones open. And so you have to go to where they are to interact. Okay. All right, so equipment. So we have used everything from the little webcam, 50 bucks Best Buy, up to some real expensive equipment. There I am. Here's the, uh, this was the very first one we did. That's the webcam we used. And we were also, 
on right there. Clear, anybody, is that still around? Clear, the little Wi-Fi. Ah, they were great. This is when we knew nothing about live streaming. We would never live stream over Wi-Fi now, but we didn't know that then. So it was great though. So uh, this is a, a shoot for our weekly TV show. There we are in studio for that. There we are on deck. You can see we do have some real expensive equipment, but you don't have to. Go ahead. We also just use iPads. We will live stream directly from the iPad. Makes it very easy. So that one, um, Makayama is the actual case. They make them for all sizes. They're great, and you can put the light on it. You can plug in the uh, microphone. We tend to like a brand called iRig, iRig for the microphone. It makes it uh, the clearest sound, we think, especially if you get the one that plugs into the actual where you plug in the power. Okay. iRig, I, the letter I, and then rig, R-I-G, iRig. And then here, uh, we're live streaming. And to go one more, right there. That's just, I think that was 100 bucks at Best Buy. It's just a typical camcorder. Most of the camcorders want to make sure that they have uh, HDMI out because that's all you need really to live stream. Okay. Or of course, you can always use your phone or your webcam. Any of those are great for live streaming. Okay. So the internet, is the most important part of live streaming. And so, go ahead. When we're on site, I'll go ahead and do this one. So, obviously, I have my cameras hardwired, running stuff back to my computer. And that's where I'm then beaming it off to live stream. But before it can do that, it has to go through a router. We never live stream unless we have 10 meg upload. Never do it unless we have 10 meg upload. I don't care what the download speed is, I have to have an upload speed. Most swimming pools don't have that much upload speed. So we actually have reached a point where now we pay to have a hard line put in. And some of the schools will go to them, and the IT department doesn't believe we need that much. I'm like, yeah, we do. And they never believe us, so we've just started dropping the, the in, our, in ourselves. So then, from the router, it gets beamed through the magical internet, all those wires, all those signals to live stream. Then it goes to whoever my viewer's local internet provider is. And then it goes to their router, and most people have Wi-Fi in their home. And then grandma gets to watch. <laughs> I said that we're good for next right now. Uh, live streaming is one of the easiest things we've done. It's also one of the hardest things we've done. And usually it's because of something in there. Because I don't know how, what her download speed is. I have no idea what it is. And it may or may not be finicky that day on her end. I may be sending too much data to where I'm overloading her internet. So sometimes we have to choose to run on a lesser quality. Live stream lets you choose the quality you want to run on, how much data you want to send down. Even if we have a specific upload speed, I generally do not go on the highest, simply because that generally will overwhelm my end user. So the highest quality is not always the best. Sometimes you want to choose a medium quality for them to be able to get it. And <laughs> it baffles me that all of this it's dependent on one little ethernet going into the wall. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's not like television. There are so many different parts of that signal that have to reach your end user. So it's not just a matter of having that WordPress site set up correctly, making it grandma proof. It's all the internet signals that go with it. So NBC live streamed the last Olympics. And so we cover swimming, we're all excited. We're going to be able to watch the live stream of swimming and be able to report real time on it. But we didn't because they could never get it going. Yeah. I was feeling pretty good. I'm like, I could do something that NBC can't do. 
So uh, it, it's the hardest thing that's also to do. So you just have to remember both of those. And you also have to remember, sometimes things go wrong. We one time had we uh, the Florida Age Group Championship meet down in Sarasota. We paid to have the internet drop. In your super, in your net. Put it up for us. And on the last day, their router died. It was a Sunday. They don't work on Sundays. They don't do service calls on Sundays. So we had to put up our apologies to the 700 people that were waiting to watch. We are not going live right now. So what we did instead, Periscope was out. We set up our phone. We taped it to a tripod, and we periscoped the whole thing. We sat there moving it, and my husband was sitting right there talking into it so he could tell them what they were looking at. Yep. Yep. 150 to 400 dollars, depending on where it is. Yeah, um, if the Y drive here in Orlando, they want to charge us 700 for. We don't drop. We don't pay for that one. Yeah, so it just depends, and you have to make a decision business-wise. Like for us, if we get the meat sponsored, then obviously you will pay for it. So other types of live streaming. You go ahead and go. So Periscope is one. Um, Periscope is great. There's a few, and of course, they're all developing. You know, all of these ones are fairly new. I mean, they've been out less than a year now. So Meerkat hit first, and then Periscope, and they were really cool. I mean, they really didn't do anything that Justin TV and Ustream, I mean, you can do them all for your phone. They were just suddenly really easy to do. They made it very easy to sign up and sign in with Twitter, and they were easy to do, and you could then tweet them out or send to your Facebook page. Um, Periscope, did they let you do it sideways? Okay, that But again, sometimes you're not going to that. Um, they have the interactive chat, which I like, so it's great. If you use Periscope, you want to make sure you're also signed up for Catch, K-A-T-C-H dot me. Because what it does is it saves your streams. And go ahead. It then allows you to embed it on your website. Remember, the whole point of live streaming is to get people to your WordPress site. So you want to make sure any, no matter what platform you use, you can always embed it. So catch.me, you sign up with Twitter, and then they do it automatically for you. They save all your streams. They even tweet on your behalf, the replay. So it's kind of a cool service. So Nomadcast, anybody heard of Nomadcast? I actually like Nomadcast interface better than Periscope. They're a company out of France, so I don't know. They're probably going to get bought, but um, right now they're still good. And I like them because they allow you to stream right to your Facebook page, and when somebody clicks on it, it plays right there in the Facebook page. It doesn't take them to a separate link. So the interface is really well. You can also embed it right away on your, you don't have to wait for the replay or anything. You can embed the live Nomad cast. So it's a good one. And... Uh, it has the chat room just like all of them do. Blab. I love Blab. Raise your hand again if you've heard of Blab. Yeah, Blab is awesome. So Blab has only been out of alpha for like four months now. It's brand new. So it reminds me of the Brady Bunch. You can only have up to four people at a time. So if these four guys are talking, I could, as a viewer, click there and ask to join the broadcast. So it's kind of like Google Hangouts, but not as glitchy. And they've got this great chat room, and they make it very interactive with Twitter. So it was so this so we've actually started doing a weekly show on Blab. Uh, this is my husband. God, he looks tired there. He doesn't usually look that tired. Um, and so he'll interview uh, coaches around the state. A couple times we've had a couple of Olympians on there that we'll interview. And so we're using that as the format that we always embed in again. Set it on our front page on our website. Make it grandma proof. You need to know what you're doing. So Blab is a great one, and hopefully it will continue growing. So check out Blab if you haven't yet. Nomad Cast. Nope. Blab is right on here as well. Yep. Yep. You can chat right from your phone through cellular. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, well, um, 
you have to talk through it with the app. So I'll pull it up right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or they can do it right through the desktop where they don't have to download anything. They just go to blab.io. Oh. So it's really easy to do. So they can do it through the cellular. Then your computer camera will come on. Yeah. So I'll show you. Yep. On our web. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And I said, um, and I'm glad you brought that back up. Most of our our views come from the recorded content, not the live content. Yes. It's all in the fifty dollars a month. Yes. Uh, no. Many views. Many replays that you want. Yeah, so this one actually, what I like about Blab is it allows you to get that embed code immediately. So you can have it sitting on your site before you go live. So you drive all your traffic to your WordPress site. And then you go live, they're watching on the WordPress site. And then after you're live, the replay lives on that site without you doing anything else. Right. Yep. Ah, there we go. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, no, actually it could be the cameras. So we have found actually because we have the really high def cameras, but if we only go to 720, it cuts down on the bitmappy of the water. Interesting enough. Higher depth with water, you're right, the splashing does not always equal a better picture. Yep. And actually, uh, some of our broadcast crew, uh, Full Sail, are you all familiar with Full Sail? They teach all this stuff. Uh, two of our guys um, told me that. So they were like, oh, well, you got you to decrease the settings there. I'm like, what? No. Nope, we don't do any plugins. We do the embed codes. So if you go to so right there, you can see an embed code. Just the same way that you grab an embed code for a YouTube video, and you can go to the text side of not the visual editor, but the text editor on WordPress, and you put just the embed code. So you don't need any plugins or anything like that just on the actual blog post or the blog page. You have a visual editor that gives you the whole bar to do the headings and stuff, or you can go to the text editor. So you put the embed code in that text editor, and that's all you need to do. Right. Or on Blab. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. You had a question? Probably none. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. For sure. For sure. Yeah, there are some times when, because I also do some of the commentating for the meets, there are times when I'm the only one there. We have our camera stationary, and I'll switch between the cameras because when we have multi-camera set up, I'll also be reading the names on the heat sheet. I'll also be monitoring the chat. Very rarely is it coming at you so quickly that you can't manage. Yep. Yes. You certainly can. You as the admin can. So one of our viewers cannot, but I can download all of them when we do that. So we, we, I mean, we do like hours upon hours of, so for any given swim meet, we do probably 12 to 15 hours worth of broadcast. 
And so if we were to try and store that ourselves, I mean, we'd be out of, out of storage. So it, it, it works for me to do that $50 a month to live stream to have them store it. And I mean, we can go back four years and our content's still there, but we do download um, so we have a backup of it. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, I don't know. I don't know, I'm sorry, just because I've never had to investigate that, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so Meerkat was, uh, so I tried Meerkat first and then quickly went to Periscope just because it was native to uh, Twitter and so I liked that. Um, but of the two, I actually like Nomadcast better than any of them. <laughs> yeah, so um, when we first started live streaming, that was a challenge for us, simply because our computer only had so many ports. And we had to have a port for the microphone and a port for the camera, and we were like, how do you have another camera? We don't have any more ports. And there was all these timing issues between one camera going at one rate and the other camera going at another rate would mess up. So now they have all this great equipment that help you live stream. It can be pricey. Um, Black Magic Medium, so Black Magic is our preferred um, manufacturer. They sell uh, what's called a television switcher, an ATEM, A-T-E-M television switcher. And what it does is you plug your cameras in there. You can plug up to six and then you can plug your microphone and audio in there, and then you have one that goes out into your computer, or in our case, we actually go to Livestream has a box that we stream through, so. so the yeah, the switcher does, so we have actually a computer set up where, um, so where you actually are able to So that one over there is where we're actually switching which camera is on. That one right there actually shows the camera so I know which one I want to switch to. This one right here was actually where we were using Wirecast at the time to do our graphics and overlay. And then this one right here was what I was actually monitoring the chat on. So that one would be a lot. <laughs> that one would be a lot. Yes. Yeah, so we are on a multi-site. In fact, we've just gone through an upgrade. We, our site kept crashing because we finally reached enough traffic to where we had to move up to a, to a more dedicated server versus the share. Bluehost. <laughs> they are my best friend. They, uh, they, whenever I have a problem or anything like that, I'll call them up. Yep. So I'm hosting-wise, not the one you want to talk to because that's not my expertise. They'll have an empty one on there. They'll have empty one where you can click and want to join. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that one, they do it right on the Facebook comments. They will show up in the chat room. Oh no, here I'll show you what it looks like. Nomad cast. Yeah. All right, any other last questions? I think I'm reaching towards the end of my time. All right, anybody inspired to try live streaming? Yeah. Really, it's not that difficult. They make it so much easier now. And probably a year from now, my talk will be totally different because there'll probably be all new tools out. So, I mean, give it a try, especially the ones like Blab that are so easy to use. I mean, they're, they're great. So easy to use, no special equipment, just your computer. So this is what Nomadcast looks like. Is it, is it, is it only for iOS? Might be. There may not be Android. Yeah.